views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to Angel Healing House Radio. My name is Claire Candy Hoff. Through my business, Angel Healing House, which can be found at angelhealinghouse.com. I'm a writer and an author, an international radio host, a Reiki master teacher, and an angel practitioner. My inspirational books entitled Angels of Faith and One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness and my autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, are based on my recollections of our life in spirit, and they help us to remember our divine, eternal natures. Through Angel Healing House, I help people to let go of sadness, anger, bitterness, resentment, and regret that has kept them locked in the prison of the past, and I help them to let go of worry, stress, and control which has kept them focused on an imagined future. And once they are no longer living in the past or the future, they can start to live in the present moment, which is the only place that they can experience synchronicities, miracles, and magic. As an angel practitioner, I help people to see their lives from a higher perspective with the help of an extraordinary group of angels who call themselves the Posse of Angels. Just like my angelic family, the Posse of Angels, I'm very excited to take some of your calls for that free angel advice. You can call into the show on 1-800-930-2819. But before we get to those callers, welcome everyone once again to Angel Healing House Radio. You know, everyone, over the past eight years that I've been presenting my wonderful weekly radio program, I've received beautiful comments from listeners. I'd like to share and start on today's show by thanking a longtime listener for this lovely email that I received. She writes, I'd just like to write a testimonial for all the love and support that I've received from Claire Candy Hoff over the years. I've been a longtime listener to the, her radio show, Angel Healing House, and have received many angel messages and guidance during that time. She's guided and supported me through my life changes and challenges, always coming from a place of love and compassion. She really has been my cheerleader, encouraging me and lifting my spirit when I needed it the most. Thank you, Claire, for the amazing person that you are and for your generosity of spirit. I know I am but one of many who have been touched by your kindness. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. And that comes, uh, that's love and blessings, and it comes from Julia Ladd in Florida. So thank you very much, Julia. With today being the last show of March 2019, we'll be finishing up. Our theme for this whole month was about miracles and manifestations. And by the way, if you missed any of the shows um, during March or any of the shows over the past two years, and, um, and even before that, you can go on to the Transformation Talk radio page and on my host page, and uh, they are all archived there. So you can uh, have a search through the different topics and uh, see what catches your fancy. And you can listen any time that you wish, and the podcasts are always available to you. But today's show is entitled Miracle Healings. You know, I recently read a quote um, by Albert Einstein in which he said, there are only two ways to live your life. As if one, as if nothing is a miracle, and the other is as though everything 
is a miracle. I've mentioned before on this radio program that when the supernatural occurs in a person's life, this supernatural intervention occurs for someone, it is so life-altering that for those who have been touched by this divine intervention, we are truly never the same again. And when it comes to the discussion of miracles, over the past 16 years, through my angel healing house, healing practice, I have been witness to extraordinary miracle healings. And in today's program, with it being uh, the month of miracles, I thought I would share, <clears throat> excuse me, a few of those many miraculous, seemingly unexplained healings that have happened at Angel Healing House. In the year of 2006, a client of mine, Samantha, now this is not her real name, but let's call her Samantha, she found, and, um, she found herself newly graduated from high school, and she married her high school sweetheart at the young age of 18, and she wanted to have a family straight away. As the years went by, her dream of starting a family was not realized, and she was having a great deal of difficulty falling pregnant. Over the past six years, uh, she had gone from doctor to doctor and had many tests to see why she could not fall pregnant. Each doctor confirmed that she had a condition called endometriosis, with one doctor saying that it was one of the worst cases that he had ever seen. Now, just to give you a little background on what this in is, endometriosis is an often painful disorder in which the tissue that normally lines the inside of the uterus grows outside the uterus and can cause infertility. Now, under the definition on Wikipedia, it states there is no cure for endometriosis, but the pain associated with it can be treated in a variety of ways. When Samantha asked her doctor what she could do to get rid of it so that she could fall pregnant, he agreed with Wikipedia's findings by telling her there is no cure for it and adoption is your only avenue if you wish to have children. Well, crestfallen and so deeply disappointed and downhearted, Samantha, who at once was positive and she had an optimistic nature, it turned to disappointment and she spiraled into a very deep depression. In our first session, Samantha shared with me her sadness of not being able to conceive. And you know what, everyone? All the time, I saw her angels surrounding her, and they were shaking their heads no. They were disagreeing with her. I intuited that there was an emotional block somewhere that was lodged in her body that was causing this physical block to occur. I felt that the puzzle piece that was missing as to her complete health was associated somewhere in her childhood. And so I asked her to speak about her childhood and I, I asked her about her parents. She told me that her mother was very loving and, uh, and very compassionate and caring towards her. But when I asked her about her father, the energies in the room completely changed. They went from being warm when she spoke about her mother to being icy and frozen. Samantha's response to me asking about her father, she said, well, my father and my mother were not able to conceive for 15 years. And then suddenly, my mother fell pregnant with me. When I was my, and my father was so elated as he desperately wanted a boy to carry on the family name. When I was born, my mother had such a difficult childbirth that they told her that she would never, ever be able to have any more children. Well, the disappointment that the father showed to Samantha that she was not a boy 
was constantly evident. He didn't allow her to cry. He made her participate in um, uh, sports like football and cricket, sports that she hated. And then um, she wanted to do ballet and music and painting. And her father told her that these um, activities were a complete waste of time and money. And the older that Samantha, Sam, as she was called, her father was named Sam. So the older that Samantha grew, the more she sought the love and recognition of her father. And she basically shut down anything and everything that had any semblance of femininity attached to it. She married young hoping to have a child of her own to bring up without the controlling that she had endured. Now, over a five-month series of Reiki healing sessions and intuitive counseling with me, Samantha could clearly see that because her father only wanted a boy, she had unconsciously shut down being a female, which shut down her ability to conceive. With each session, the many, many years of accumulated negative blocking energies of anger, sadness, bitterness, resentment, and regret were slowly transmuted to positive light energies, and her emotional wellness returned as she let go of the past. She forgave her father, and she put all of her emphasis on loving herself for exactly who she is. It was towards the end of our fifth month of sessions that Samantha went for her routine doctor's appointment and she and her husband found out that she was pregnant. The doctors called it a spontaneous remission. It was a miracle conception. But Samantha, myself, and the posse of angels, we were not surprised. We were thrilled, but we were not surprised. Now, there was another case, another case of a miracle healing, and this arrived soon after um, uh, I found out that uh, Samantha was pregnant. Not long after uh, Samantha's miracle healing, I received a call from a mother who was in distress because she didn't know where else to turn. She explained that her teenage daughter, Brenda, again, this is not her real name, but let's call her Brenda. Uh, Brenda was addicted to drugs and, um, and she was so, uh, the, the mother was beside herself. So after I spoke with the mother a while, for a while, she booked a session for her daughter. On the day of Brenda's appointment, the doorbell rang. And I was so surprised when I opened the door to see a middle-aged lady there standing at the door, no one else. At that moment, the mother pulled from behind her this, this stick-like figure, um, and she pulled her daughter Brenda from behind her. And I gasped, this anorexic, it looked like a skeleton She's ashen-faced, and she was absolutely unstable. She was shaky on her feet. She was so zoned out that her mother literally pushed the girl into my arms and said, here, you do something with her. I'll be back in a couple of hours. Well, as Brenda was unable to stand on her own, I put my arm around the teenager, and I assisted her to my office. You know, I was absolutely horrified as there was no weight to lift her. She was absolutely emaciated. Settling her into my office chair, I gave her a client form to fill out. And she was so out of it that she couldn't even hold the pen up. And she was having trouble even reading the form to fill it out. You know, I know everyone from my previous, I knew at that time from my previous work, um, with, through my healing house, assisting those people who've been addicted to drugs and alcohol, that substance abuse can cause cracks in a person's aura. And once these cracks appear, dark, oftentimes malevolent energies can invade the body. 
Now, these dark energies often then use and manipulate the person's body, their mind, and their spirit in very destructive ways without their permission because they have because the person has unknowingly that this is unknowingly given over their control and empowerment through the masking of substance abuse now the angels told me to forego the client form they said forget about the client form just get her on the mas- the massage table as quickly as possible after setting her on the table I then said my usual invocation of working simply as a channel for God and for the angels to assist me. And as usually happens um, during a session at Angel Healing House, uh, my clients fall asleep and Brenda immediately fell asleep. Um, I knew that the angels had put Brenda to sleep so that they could work with her unconscious state. And in this way, they are completely relaxed, surrendered in, their, in order to release. Now, in her unconscious state, Brenda then began to take very deep breaths in and out. And the breaths became very rhythmic and steady. And I got the impression that it was like the breaths were building up steam in order for something to happen. With each of her breaths, I could feel the energy increasing around her closed down heart. And I received the angel's message that she had endured much trauma in her young life in order to completely close down her heart. The more light that was being channeled through me into her body, the more that her body began to squirm on the table as the increased light of God was actually burning away the dark entities uh, within her and attached to her. And then I saw what looked like ghostly forms escaping and fleeing from her now light-filled body. Suddenly, without warning, Brenda grabbed at her heart and she sat bolt upright, opened her eyes, as the angels lifted a dark cloud off of her and replaced it with this huge light of God. And as they were doing this, Brenda's face, her face coloring started to change. Her ashen gray complexion with deep pools of darkness underneath her eyes began to transform to light, bright, pink, and it was like a glowing vibrancy that was coming out of her. Her cheeks that were sunken were now filling up with a rosy radiance. Looking around the room with newborn eyes, she was dazed and she was quite unsure of where she was. But she did tell me about the circle of angels around her. And she said, thank you. Thank you for saving my life. I explained that the angels needed to lift this darkness off of her in order for us to have any success at her healing. She then sat down and we began the intuitive counseling session. Now coherent, perfectly able to hold herself up and to speak clearly, Brenda went on to tell me about the sexual abuse that she had endured from her stepfather when she was a young child and how her mother, who had been physically abused herself, chose to do nothing about it. Having no support system and no self-worth, Brenda chose to escape through drugs and by not eating, she wished herself to die. Now Brenda cried and she told me that with being incoherent and most, most of the time un, unable to function socially, her parents said that she was not allowed to attend her brother's wedding, which was in three months' time. Every week, Brenda came for healing sessions and she was unable to burden again her anger, her sadness, her bitterness, her resentment and regret. 
And through each week, she became empowered and stronger. Now, over two and a half months, she became so healthy and happy that her parents saw this enormous change in her. It was at this time that I received a note from Brenda's mother saying, I can't thank you and the angels enough for giving our daughter back to us. In fact, I took Brenda shopping today for a dress for her to be a part of her brother's wedding party. You are a miracle worker, Candy. A month later, I received photos from Brenda. She was smiling. She looked absolutely radiant in her beautiful new dress at her brother's wedding. It was, uh, it was truly an amazing, an amazing healing that what can happen when you allow the light of God to replace the darkness. Now, the posse of angels, here they come in. They're reminding all of us that God and the angels can work miracles when it comes to increasing, they're saying increasing the likelihood of reversing and eradicating dis-ease from the body, mind, and spirit. But no matter who the healing practitioner is, the key to all healing is a contract between the client and that higher source. The practitioner is merely the channel or some people would say the conduit for the light to come through. Now, this is the, this is the reason that I have never, ever used the word healer on anything. I've never used the word healer on anything. Um, associated with Angel Healing House in the past 16 years, as I'm not the healer. I am not doing the healing, and I am merely the channel for this to happen. It's the individual, the client, who must surrender and work with the angelic energies to allow themselves to open to receive the healing. A practitioner can have a whole list of modalities that they are very well-schooled in, and they've studied with quite esteemed people. But without this willingness and openness on the part of the client to heal, then true healing will remain unrealized. Now, the posse of angels are also reminding us of the saying that, in this case, God really does help those people who help themselves. You know, our bodies are truly miraculous. And when we work with our bodies to make sure that we are living balanced lives physically by nourishing it and and eating clean living foods that oxygenate our bodies and by exercising, by mentally focusing our thoughts and our feelings and keeping our thoughts positive by emotionally choosing love and forgiveness over anything else, and spiritually, by living from our divine eternal natures, we can then work with the miraculous energies of the angels in order to become whole again. And then miracles don't, um, are not so far away from everyone's doorstep. You know, I'd like to remind everyone with just a few minutes left uh, that that uh, we are still we are still very much under the influence of last week's full moon energies in Libra and also the equinox and and these things occurred on March twentieth and both of these energies are heralding the beginning of a brand new cycle. Ready or not, many of us are going to be presented with new fresh starts. Now, many people don't uh, they think that the year begins in January, but astrologically, and that's why we always uh, see astrological forecasts, zodiacal forecasts that always start with Aries because that is the beginning of the astrological year. Now, in order to experience the new, what do we have to do? We have to purge and release the old, surrendering anything that no longer serves us or is draining us, And we do this through unconditional love and forgiveness. You know, maybe you've noticed that when others um, 
start to relay negative things, negative thoughts and actions, or they speak about how terrible their life is or how terrible the world is. It makes you feel downright uncomfortable. It's not that you don't care about these people anymore or the world, but with these new energy shifts, many of us are unwilling to accept and put any of our focus and attention and energies on any form of negativity at all. The Posse of Angels, they wish for us to know that this recent huge energy shift, with this we are no longer responsible for lighting up the world as that part of our mission is complete and will now be taken over by those who follow us. So if you know that you have been a light worker and you have consciously worked to um, pass on the information of light and love with so many others, your that part of your mission is on, over. And so many of you may be asking, what do I do now? Well, our greatest responsibility now is to love ourselves and make ourselves a priority after we've given so much to the light. We gave our time. We gave our effort. We gave our money as we saved and helped and enabled so many others to find the path of light as well. Now, we get to move on to this next stage of our mission in our lives. And the posse of angels are assuring us that even though you may not know what that looks like yet and how it's going to show up for you, they want you to know that it is combining all the things that you love doing, all your skills and all your abilities. And then when it manifests for you now, it means that you're ready to step forward to best utilize these new energies. We are being encouraged to put our energy into things that we're passionate about and make us joyful and make us feel whole and complete. Now, as a result, with this massive amount of self-love energy that many of us are experiencing, it will draw to us nothing less than the fulfillment of our heart's desires. And with today being the official, some would say, yay, (laughs) end of Mercury retrograde, things should start moving forward again soon. But as I always say, please, listeners, do remember that even though today is the official um, end uh, and the start of it moving forward, Mercury uh, does not fully get out of its shadow phase and doesn't turn around. It's a very big planet and it takes a while for it to turn around and go full speed ahead for um, and at least another two weeks. So I will keep you posted on what those new fresh starts look like for me. And, you know, when you experience your new fresh beginnings, I would love to hear from you too. To share it with me, you can either call into the show or you can either email me at candy, C-A-N-D-Y, at angelhealinghouse.com. And I really do look forward to hearing from you. You can, uh, you can uh, just feel it that it's on the horizon. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we will take some of those calls for those free angel readings. I'll speak to you soon. Have you discovered the remarkable books at angelhealinghouse.com? Author Claire Candy Hoff has channeled rare books of inspiration and insight. Angels of Faith is an inspiring story of healing, comfort, and hope that reminds us that death is not to be feared, but embraced with joy. One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness takes readers on a roller coaster ride through Angel Ariel's five most important lives on Earth, as well as her experiences in the afterlife, and helps us remember our own journey across the veil. And Claire Candy's autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, which details the 2003 soul exchange that took place when Claire Candy walked out of her body and Angel Ariel walked in. 
creating heaven on earth for herself and others. To find out more about these wonderful books, visit angelhealinghouse.com today. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Hoff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716 or visit angelhealinghouse.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Angel Healing House Radio with me, Claire Candy Hoff. Just a quick reminder of my two number one Amazon international bestsellers. Both of these books went number one in Canada, in the USA, in Germany, Australia, and uh, Germany, Australia, the UK. Um, the first one is One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness about my five most important past lives and then what the heck I did in the afterlife or our one true home in heaven in between those lives. And then the sequel to that book is I Am an Angelic Walk-In, the autobiography of Angel Ariel, in which I speak about my walk-in experience, which happened on January 11th of 2003, in which the former soul of Candy, who was uh, Claire Candy, who was in the body, walked out after her traumatic life, and I, Angel Ariel, walked in. There's also a wonderful children's book, Angels of Faith, based on my two near-death experiences, and everyone who reads it is awakening to the fact that we are divine and we live on. And so if you want to find out more about those books, um, purchase them. You can go to Amazon or you can go to my website, which is angelhealinghouse.com. Let's go to our callers and see who we have on the line. Our first caller is Anne. Anne is in California. Hello, Anne. You're on the line with Claire Candy Huff. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you so much for taking my call. You're very, very welcome. Um, what uh, Do you have a, a question today? I do. So this is a little embarrassing, but um, let me explain. You, first of all, Anne, are you on speaker? No. Okay, because there is an echo somewhere there. Um, Maybe it's just because hmm. I'm in kind of a quasi-empty room. Okay. Um, okay, so if you could just speak up a little bit. Okay. Is, can you, is this better? That's better. Okay. Maybe I should go outside? Maybe that would help. No, actually, it's getting it better help? now. It's better now? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, could I start? Yes. Yes. Okay. So it's a little embarrassing. Over the past few years, I've become infatuated with a couple of young men, mm -hmm. but like teenage girl crush infatuation, which would be totally fine if I was a teenager, but I'm not. I'm a 40 something married mom, and I have no intention of pursuing an extramarital romance. That would be mm -hmm. bad on many levels. That would be bad. However, I recently discovered that these two young men share a birthday, and that really weirded me out. And I was wondering if maybe... Could, uh, sorry, sorry, them. Anne. Can you repeat what you just last said? Because part of that dropped out. These two oh, young right. men... They share a birthday. They have the same oh, birthday. Oh, okay. So that kind of weirded me out. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if maybe there's more to this. Like the universe is trying to tell me something that I'm not seeing. Okay. All right. Well, as I'm shuffling the cards and as you were speaking, um, these uh, two young men uh, or these two souls um, are, from, are they're from your soul group. And you had, you had unrealized romances with them in the past. That's what it feels like. And it, it feels like there's, 
uh, there's something that's unfinished between the two, uh, between the three of you. Um, I'm not saying that there was a, like a threesome, but um, I'm, I'm feeling that there was a relationship with one of these souls and there was a relationship with another one of these souls and that there's this longing, there's this longing for you uh, in this lifetime, because especially in the energies, if you, if you, if you listen to um, uh, the first part of this program, at the end of it, when I speak about the energies that we're going into, our new fresh starts, we have to really surrender and purge anything that is still unfinished or we don't have closure on. So one of the great things that you can do um, without speaking to them, um, uh, you know, in the physical, is to speak with their higher self. So the, the posse of angels and I want you to do this exercise and it will help release that part of your heart that all that feels like there's this unrealized longing still to to want to have a, a romantic or a sexual relationship with them. Um, you could do it separately for each one. Uh, get yourself quiet. You can, do, you know, make it a ceremony or something in which you light some incense or a candle or you don't have to have those things or put crystals around you. You call in your angels, call in your higher self and call in their higher self. And then what you do is you um, acknowledge, you acknowledge them, you know, uh, that you had a past life together because if you are having this strong feeling, then you definitely had um, some kind of liaison. It could have been an affair. You know, um, that uh, one or if not both of these. Mm. Do, you have any, do you have any ties to Italy? Do you, do you have any? Yeah. Well, yeah, kind of. The northern part. The no- yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. That, that, that just, that just came in. I believe one, if not both of these gentlemen is from a lifetime in Italy. Um, that's, that's what's come in. It doesn't matter where it's from. I just got that impression, but you can, you can say, I acknowledge that I wrote you into my contract. Um, and I, I thank you. I thank you for this wonderful, you can even sit there and you can allow these impressions to wash over you. You know, I thank okay. you. I thank you for these, that, that wonderful time we had together. And I do believe that when you do this, make time for it, you will see with one of these, I believe you were married then and you did have an affair with him. Actually, oh. then, yeah, that's what, that's what it feels like. It feels like it was some kind of and they're using the word liaison or a secret affair or something like this. Um, and, then, and then because of the repercussions, I mean, divorces like in the 15th century or something like that where, you know, the wife was beheaded, beheaded or was sent into exile or goodness knows what. It wasn't as, uh, as, as kind as it, as, it, as it is today. But you can thank uh, this soul. You can bless them. And then you can uh, just send the situation green healing love, just waves of green healing love and, and beautiful pink unconditional love, waves of, of pink unconditional love towards this. And then feel yourself releasing this. Say, I still love you. I still love you, but I don't have to act on this in order to, uh, you know, to have closure on it in any way. And this is going to help you enormously. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. I'll just choose three cards for you, Anne. Um, and, and, and it wasn't that embarrassing. It wasn't that embarrassing. Um, also, when, when we've had uh, experiences like this in which we have a longing, um, it, it also is an indicator to... Uh, nurture ourselves more. Maybe between work and I don't know if you have children or family commitments or everything else, life is very busy uh, in the modern world. And for us to feel emotionally nourished, 
Um, I know that, uh, you know, uh, there, uh, there are couples that have been helped that have come to a healing house. Um, I'm not saying that you have to have a session, but, you know, uh, to have like a date night or, or to carve out time in which you're going to go away. It could even be a staycation. You don't have to go anywhere, you know, like go for a romantic trip to Hawaii or something like that, but just carve out time to, to hold hands to walk along the ocean, to do, you know, to do those things in which you feel intimate with one another. Um, and a lot of times if we're, if we're satiated and we, we feel like we're complete and whole inside, then those longings then don't take us outside of the relationship. Let's just see what we have when we go to the cards. The first card for you that's coming out is uh, the King of Wands. The King of Wands cards is this these gentlemen from the past. Um, they also held, um, because in former times, uh, you know, the feminine was really nothing. It was a patriarchal world. Um, you might have felt controlled by them as well. Maybe there are parts of you that might be feeling out of control. So when you can really nurture yourself and nourish yourself and, and feel whole and complete, then you don't long uh, for something outside of yourself. The next card that's coming out for you is the strength card. This is to strengthen uh, your relationship. Uh, the most beautiful relationship you'll ever have is the relationship with yourself and to be loving and kind. And the next card that's coming out for you is the Queen of uh, Cups. And the Queen of Cups is the intuition card. Um, you know, dig deep into your intuition. Never deny those things. And I think it's going to help you enormously to do that exercise for your, uh, uh, to bring closure on those two lovely souls. So I hope that's been helpful for you. Very helpful. Thank you so much. Okay. Have a blessed day and take care. Thank you. You too. Bye. Let's go to our next caller. We have Christine in California. Hello, Christine. You're on the line with Angel Healing House Radio. How are you today? Oh, I'm great. Thank you so much for taking my call. You're very welcome. What is your question? Um, I guess I'll, I'll make it kind of general to start with. I mean, I don't, I don't want to get too, and then you can ask me what details you need to know. Um, I'm, I'm very concerned about my father and his health and well-being, okay. and I, I don't know what is the best way to, to help him. Okay. It's, it's interesting uh, through the, the years um, when I have had people ask about this question. The first thing that the Posse of Angels wants you to know is uh, everyone Everyone writes in the contract of their life when they are going to exit. That's non-negotiable. Okay. That, that's, okay. already, that's already been set in stone. There is nothing medical. There is nothing, you know, emotional, spiritual. There's nothing that we can do to sway that, okay? That's, mm -hmm. their, that's their free will and free choice. But what you can do is you can be supportive. You can be right. supportive okay. in, in whatever uh, he chooses and, the, and to make the person the most comfortable that you can and to be the okay. most loving. A lot of times uh, we, uh, we certainly went through this. I mean, we as a family went through this when my dad passed away three years ago. And uh, the interventions that happened um, in, in prolonging, in his case, it actually prolonged his suffering. Um, mm. and, uh, and when he did cross over, you know, he said, you know, I wish the family had been more, you know, just accommodating and just more supportive to me and had mm. listened to me. So, um, mm -hmm. that's the, that's the most wonderful thing that you can do is love this person for exactly who they are and the choices that they make, um, and be, and be supportive. Um, um, also, you can also, uh, in your time of quiet reflection, you can call in your higher self and call in his higher self 
And mm-hmm. in that time, and in that time, you can speak to his higher self and ask, what is it that you need now? What is okay. it? What is it that you need most? What is it that you need most? And in most cases, you know, because we live in such an abundant world, um, the person's uh, medical needs are, you know, a lot of times looked after. They have their, their, their dietary needs, um, but it's the emotional part that they need to be supported with. And um, I don't know if that answers your whole thing. Is there, is there um, anything else in that that you wanted to ask questions about? Um, well, first, thank you. That's that's very helpful. Um, I guess my other concern is that he's he's married to a woman. Um, he's very devoted to her, but um, I guess you know. It's a, I don't want to make him have to choose between. I mean, not that he would choose between his daughter and his wife, but I'm. Mm-hmm. I just uh, she. There's been so many examples. I just feel like she doesn't have his, um, just some, even in some simple ways, his best interests in mind. Right, um, right, right. But, um, but like I said, it's it, that's his. It's his wife, and he's he's gonna, he's he's with her. Right. Um, and they're not in this state. I wish I could get them to California. At least I could visit him more. Right. Um, well, one of the things is that you can you can visit him in the etheric, is that you can make time to quiet yourself in reflection, and that you can bring in his higher self, and you can talk to him that way. Um, another thing is that the thing that you can do. I mean, I, I know in this in this situation, uh, Christine, you must feel helpless. Situation. Um, <laughs> yes. It, it, it's true. But in this situation, yes. and then, you know, it, to see that if somebody doesn't have somebody's best interest at heart, unfortunately, you cannot control anyone else and you cannot interfere with free will. But what you can do is you can send both of these people green healing love, waves of it, waves of emerald green healing love and pink bubblegum pink waves of unconditional love and uh and to release this from your heart is really important and say Mm. say thank you thank you for this working out for the greatest good of myself the greatest good of all concerned um i don't i release all judgment please forgive me for whatever part that I've played in this, even though we can't figure it out. Um, And I take accountability for writing both of you into my contract. What she's teaching you is tolerance, patience, acceptance, and forgiveness. Four of the Mm. hardest things to learn as spirit in this human body. And the only way that we learn it is through contrast. Uh, it's, It's very easy to accept somebody who you know, uh, who we can tolerate or somebody who is very much like us, but to unconditionally love somebody and to forgive them uh, when they are 180 degrees opposite from us, you know, is is the path of a master, truly. Um, So let's go to the cards and see what comes out for our lovely Christine. First card that's coming out for you is the Wheel of Fortune. Okay, the Wheel of Fortune is saying that destiny is is turning in your favor, meaning that once if you take these words to heart that the posse of angels have told you, then it's going to lighten your heart. It's going to lighten your heart. It's going to make all areas of your life much lighter and brighter. You're going to feel as if you can proactively give to your uh, give to your dad instead of having this heaviness this real heavy energy. The next card for you is the Knight of Swords. This is the new way of thinking, a new way of thinking, a new clarity about you that's coming in. And then the third card, I love this card, is the Nine of Pentacles, which is the feeling abundant card instead of feeling like you're being constantly drained. So I hope that's been helpful for you, Christine. Oh, it's been immensely helpful. I love the idea of being able to talk to his higher self as well as, as mine and us talking together, that'll be wonderful. And I think you're, you're right. This is challenging. It's very challenging, <laughs> but I like, I mean, it's something, but to send them both that green and pink love 
um, yes. and energy. That will help that enormously. Be, yeah, that is definitely uh, my task ahead. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Have a blessed day. Take care. Okay, you too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Let's go to our next caller. We have Mel. Mel, you're on the line with Claire Candy Hoff. Are you there? Hi. Hi. What's your What's your question, Mel? Um, I, I I guess I'm always I'm looking for guidance when it comes to to um my career. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if I can be as vague as that, but I have I I kind of feel like I have um two sides of my life. Um, and I feel like they're imbalanced, but I always am you know very curious to know. I always wonder if I'm doing the right thing. Okay. Uh, There is no right. There's no wrong. There's no good. There's no bad. (laughs) And especially in these energies, when it's all about loving ourselves, is if if you're doing what you're doing career-wise or, you know, work or job or whatever you want to call that, um, Mm -hmm. if if you would do it, if you weren't paid the money, if when you do it, you lose all track of time, if when you do it, it's like breathing for you, if you do it, you can't wait to get up in the morning and do it. This is what has been seeded in your soul by you and that higher source, God, universal, all that is, creator, whatever you want to call that. And when you're Mm -hmm. doing it, you feel alive. If you can answer yes, then keep doing that. If you get a no in any one of those areas, you might be doing it for the money. You might be doing it for the paycheck. You might be doing it for the recognition. You might be doing it for ego success, you know, to to show mm-hmm. your family that you're, you're worth, you know, <laughs> uh, worth it, you know, to show that... Uh, uh, to get your identity from it. Uh, there's all reasons that we can do things in life. Um, oh, that's, oh, he picked that up. That's my landline, which never rings. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. All right. <laughs> Quick, Petey. Oh, just, I hope my husband picks that up because, I. okay, he did. Thank you. Um, <laughs> no, he didn't. Oh, my gosh. he pick it up. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm very, very sorry. It's all right. Um, uh, let me see. So um, getting back to your question, um, if you can answer yes, that you're doing that because you're passionate and so joyful, Mel, about what you're doing, then continue on that path. Can you answer yes to that? Um, yeah. I mean, it, it's yes, and it is providing for my family, which we require. We do require money to live. Okay. Okay. All right. No, no, you know, because we're all spiritual beings having a human experience, you know, we need little things like food and shelter over our heads, you know, and and petrol for our cars and things like that. So, um, but what they're getting at is if, uh, if maybe in this area in your working, if you're, uh, if you're not joyful and you're not passionate um, maybe it, it, it requires you to look elsewhere. If uh, the money was not the issue, would you still be doing this? Um, I don't know. I mean, if, if it's, I, I feel like possibly, I mean, yeah, I feel like, like our, yes. I mean, yes, I love building. I love, I love building things. I, I love being a part of this. So I feel like, yes, I would still be involved with growing this. Okay. All right. So, so that then that's an that's an important part of all of this. So they're saying um, maybe you're picking this up because you're also feeling like something else is coming your way, because there mm-hmm. are these new fresh starts and new beginnings. Once as Mercury is going forward, we're going into April, the equinox, this this past mm-hmm. full moon. All of these things are bringing fresh starts. So maybe you're feeling. Like there is a new fresh start for you on the horizon. Maybe put in your wish list, your intention of what you would love or how you would love to tweak this job of yours. That's probably, it's probably not the job itself. It's probably aspects of the job. This job would be absolutely incredible if I could just A, B, C, whatever that is, Mm -hmm. and then start to visualize those intentions coming to fruition. Okay. I think that's going to help Mm -hmm. you most of all, just to tweak what you've been doing here and a card for you. 
and they just want me to pull out one card, is the star card. And you are the star. This is the card of hope. And the more with hope, everything becomes possible. So what they want you to do is they want you to, to like a little girl, I wish upon a star that this, <laughs> that this new job of mine, you know, it would be so much better if, and then just play with that. Because it's in this mm-hmm. playful wonderment and enchantment that makes us feel. It makes us feel childlike, like anything is possible. And with this show about being miracles today, miracles are possible in our daily life through our intentions, through our visualizations, and the energies that we put into them. So I hope that's been helpful for you today. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, you go and have an absolutely gorgeous day. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in to Angel Healing House Radio, which airs every week on Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time here on Transformation Talk Radio. And um, if you'd like to uh, find out more about my services, my books, please go to my website, which is Angel Healing House. Dot com And that number is 831-277-3716. Everyone, please go out and fashion an absolutely unbelievable life to yourself this, this uh, next week. And uh, I'm wishing you love and angel blessings. And I so look forward to speaking with you again next week. Take care, everyone. And I'll speak to you next week. Bye. Mm-hmm.